On this week's KSP News Show, Squad go over the details of the aerodynamic overhaul and the Kerbal EVA is about to get a whole lot more interesting. All that and more on this week's KSP News Show. Reporting live from the Kerbal Space Center, it's your host, Jim Lee Kerman. Good morning, evening, and afternoon, my fellow Kerbonauts. My name is Jin Lee Kerman. Welcome back to the KSP News Show. Once again, I would like to say I am very sorry for this being uploaded on a Monday or a Tuesday night rather than a Sunday night like it is usually uploaded. Um, I have had a lot of schoolwork and a lot of stuff to do with actual work in the past couple of weeks. And it's kind of been kind of sucky for the start of the new year. But uh, we're here, we're back, and uh, we're still pumping out these episodes, even if they are a little bit late. But we have some awesome stories to cover, so hopefully this episode will be quite interesting for you guys. So let's kick off with our first story for today. In the dev notes this week, Harvester has been going on about some of the details we were going to be finding in the overhauled aerodynamics that are of course coming in 0.91. Um, he was outlining, he said he'd written a massive wall of text, and he is not wrong on the Kerbal Space Program forums about what they're going to try and do with these changes, so to say. And first of all, he starts off in this massive wall of text, which I shall link down below for you guys to read for yourself, because I'm only going to go over it very briefly here. And he outlines some of the problems. First of all, he says that cargo bays and nose cones have no use. And I have to say, I completely agree with him here. Cargo bays and nose cones, as he says, this is a big one. Nose cones and cargo bays are no more than dead weight and wasted funds if they offer no advantage over launching an exposed payload. And he has a definite point there, because aside from looking cool, nose cones and cargo bays, they, they don't do much. Um, they, can, they can help make, it, like I say, aside from an aesthetic point of view, cargo bays and nose cones... They just don't do much at the moment. They are essentially dead weight. So with this new aerodynamic overhaul, he is going to be trying, him and his team of the Kerbal Space Program devs, will be trying to make sure that they offer some sort of advantage of, of over um, launching an exposed payload. He also goes on to say that streamlined designs don't fly any faster than non-streamlined designs. And this is also quite... I wasn't expecting this change, actually, but I think that this is a a proper issue that needs to be addressed, so to speak. Because if you think about it, if something is pointy and it cuts through the air more efficiently than something that's basically a barn on, on with wings or, or something like that, like most SSTOs have to be in Kerbal Space Program at this point in time, in order to carry the sufficient amount of fuel, um, it... I just think it needs to be it needs to be changed overall because otherwise it's going to be it's 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 not very realistic if you know what I mean. He also goes on to say and I completely agree with this that wings are inefficient making it overly difficult to design a space plane that will reach orbit with a meaningful amount of payload. Now, I've I've played with the B9 mod for quite a while now and I have to say that the wings in that mod ha offer so much more lift compared to the vanilla wings and the Space Plane Plus wings that have been implemented recently. It's, they are just so much better and they manage to lift your craft so much easier. I think that's probably because they are heavier duty wings, but even so, it, they are so much more efficient and it basically makes the vanilla wings obsolete whenever you use them. So the fact that the squad are going in and they're going to make the wings a lot more efficient to... Um, to try and get them off the ground, I think is a very good addition into the game, and I really think that I think it's needed. To be honest, this whole aerodynamic overhaul is actually needed. Um, I'm not a very good, I'm not an expert by any means on aerodynamics, so please pick me up if anything is is I've got wrong in this video. But sure thing, uh, <laughs> I really don't know what to say about that. But the next thing is he is going on about how space planes are fiddly to design and to build. And um, he says this is more concerning the UI of the space plane hangar. 
and I have to agree once again with this. I do think that the space plane, ha the space planes are one of the more advanced things to build, and I think we need something similar to Flight Engineer, um, perhaps a simplified version of Flight Engineer. Um, in the space plane hangar just to show us where our center of mass is going to be and how our craft's going to perform Even though that would be quite complicated to implement But let me let me know in the comments down below guys. What do you think about that? He also goes on about improving the lift model and stuff like that improving the drag simulation and how complex that will be and he also goes on to say how he will be, they will be fixing um, these issues. I will link the full article down below for you guys to read. Um, I am very, I'm, I'm skimming through it really because I have limited time to make this video today, and it is just a massive wall of text here. But one of the main points of this article, so to say, is just saying how difficult it is going to be to actually up, um, actually overhaul these aerodynamics because people like me, you know, you guys have watched me play Kerbal Space Program in the past, I seem to switch between making really realistic and awesome looking craft to sort of just crazy contraptions which look hilarious and are uh, hilarious to fly but wouldn't really make much sense in real life. And um, that's really what Harvester is going on about in this article here. He says that it's going to be hard because some players like to play realistically and so want a more realistic perception of aerodynamics, whereas some people would rather it would stay the same so they could continue to use their new awesome craft that would break apart under actual real aerodynamics. So he goes on to say about how this is a such a complex change and they're going to have to find a good middle ground or just simply get people to change their playstyles. Um, personally, I think finding the middle ground is a better option. Perhaps, like I said in my last episode, imp implementing Nier. Because Nier is a softer version of Ferrum Aerospace Research. Um, Ferrum, Aer Ferrum Aerospace offers pretty much the closest you can get in Kerbal Space Program to real aerodynamics, so to speak. Whereas, Nier actually... Nier is sort of a softer version. It's more for newer players who want better aerodynamics but not quite want don't quite want to commit to um, to ferrum aerospace and I think if they implemented something very close to near or if they implemented near itself I actually think that this would be really good and people could still launch their amazingly <laughs> their crazy spacecraft like I would um, but but it also gives scope for people to actually build realistic thing, realistic uh, spacecraft and aeroplanes and I think that would just make for a more diverse player base all in all. Um, Harvester does also mention quite a lot in this article about fairings. Now whether he means the engine fairings that we are talking about here or whether he's talking about cargo base or maybe as I think, I think this may be uh, a correct thing, a correct, um, a correct presumption Squad may be implementing legitimate vanilla fairings, as in the nose cones for the rockets in this update. And if they did, I would just be the happiest man alive. Um, but that's just rumour though, that's by no means confirmed. And so I think I'm going to move on from this subject. So yeah, on to the next story. So our next story for today I find kind of exciting. Now, you guys all, all know, and probably all enjoy yourself, going out on EVA. The chance to get out and stretch your legs as a Kerbal in on another world or indeed in deep space or in orbit or just generally getting outside of a spacecraft and taking a wander or jetpack around your surrounding environment to see what's what and so on. Well, it turns out that EVA is getting an overhaul in 0.91. Harvester once again said on his dev blog for this week, he says that I've also added a new feature I hope to be ready for 0.9.0, but didn't make it in. Kerbals on EVA are now able to clamber onto ledges within reach of them. This makes climbing onto vessels and, more importantly, climbing out of ladders much easier. You can also abuse it to scale previously inaccessible places because a Kerbal's job wasn't dangerous enough already, was it? 
Now, I think that this is absolutely amazing because it does mean that more animations, as Dan Rosas also goes on to say in his post, um, are going to be for the Kerbal EVA. And I'm just really glad that this feature is also getting an overhaul because Kerbal EVA hasn't really been touched all that much since, well, since the science update, really, when they added EVA reports. But in terms of actual movement, it hasn't actually been touched since 0.18 or 0.17 when they actually added it in. And so changing this and so and adding new animations, I just, I am so glad because I, uh, I, you guys literally do not know how excited I am for this, for this EVA feature. It may only be small, but it's really convenient, especially, especially when you're on like places like EVE and the gravity is so horrible, you step out your ship and you remember that you've forgotten the ladder. Um, I do that sort of thing all the time. And so to have like clambering onto ledges so you could slowly walk up a landing gear back into your craft or something of the like, I just think is going to be so much fun. Also, I'm interested to see what the animations actually look like when they're completed because I'm sure knowing Kerbal Space Program, they will be hilarious as ever. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much going to round it off for this week's episode, guys. I'm very sorry that it's going to it's been shorter, or rather longer, but rather rambly compared to usual. Um, I've kind of had to get this episode out in a rush because I haven't had all that much time. Uh, about the Kerbal Space Program music video, I am currently in the process of making the video still. It is taking longer than I was expecting, but it should be out very soon. I can't put a date on it yet, but... I just say follow us on Twitter, it's in the ticker tape down below, and also in the description, a direct link to it. Also, leave your comments down below of what you think of the new aerodynamic overhaul in Kerbal Space Program, and what you think of these new EVA th features, and what would you like to see in an overhauled EVA feature, or aerodynamic um, overhaul. What would you like to see? Would you prefer it to be realistic? Would you prefer it to stay more the same in terms of aerodynamics? Would you prefer the EVAs to perhaps be, I don't know, helmetless, like in the texture replacer mod if you're in the presence of oxygen? Let me know in the comments down below because I'm genuinely interested. I do try and read as many comments as I possibly can. But yeah guys, that's pretty much going to round it off for this episode. My name is Jin Lee Kerman, and as always, stay classy.